You know, a lot of people say that dragons are mythical. They're not real. Well, let me ask you this. If dinosaurs can be real, why couldn't a dragon? So today, as we review this sideshow Deathwing statue from World of Warcraft, I want you to try and accept the fact that either A, dragons are or they were real, or dinosaurs weren't. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're reviewing an older piece. This is actually about five or six years old, and this is made by Sideshow Collectibles. This is Deathwing, who is a dragon from World of Warcraft. Now, I personally never played World of Warcraft. I did play the shit out of Warcraft on the PC back in the day, probably 25, 30 years ago. Yes, my liege. What? Stop poking me! That bring back any memories for you guys? So I've owned this piece for about three or four years, and the reason why I bought it is I think dragons are badass. In fact, I have a shelf full of dragons. You wanna see what that looks like? Check out the Extreme Channel Instagram, Facebook page, and TikTok. I post exclusive content on there. And I realized I've reviewed all my other dragon pieces, but I haven't reviewed this one, who I think I've actually had the longest. Now, originally I had another dragon piece coming, this from PCS right here. However, I ended up canceling him because it took like three or four years and he was delayed. So for all intents and purposes, my dragon collection is complete, unless I can find this piece from Infinity Studios one day. It was made a long time ago. I think they only made a hundred and I'm trying to find him at retail. So if you know where he's at, please drop a comment below or shoot me an email. But nonetheless, let's jump into this guy right here. So Deathwing, as I said, is from World of Warcraft, which I don't have too much knowledge about, but I can talk about dragons. I can talk about statues. So let's get into it. And before we do, go ahead and comment below. How many times during this review am I gonna be smacked in the face by one of his wings? So as always, let's start with concept of this piece. This concept is pretty basic. It's a dragon destroying a castle. However, that doesn't mean that it's not cool. On the bottom here, you have essentially a castle and it's just a castle, and it's broken, and it's crumbled in different pieces, specifically where the dragon's feet are on top of it, which I think is pretty cool. I would have liked to maybe see some scorch marks to show that maybe he burned it before he landed, but maybe it was just his closest landing place. And as you move up, his tail's wrapped around the side. It looks like he's about ready to take off, or he just landed. That's why his wings are outstretched. We'll talk more about that in design. And he is sitting there with his mouth open, his claw or paw or whatever you want to call it in the air. Looks like he's ready to blow fire, but he's happy he just destroyed this town because that's what dragons do. I'll never forget one of my favorite movies growing up was actually Dragon Slayer. Now I can't remember if it was Dragon's Lair, like that's where the dragon lived, or if it was Dragon Slayer, like someone who kills the dragon, because both of those are big parts of the movie. You don't know what I'm talking about. Here's a poster of it. It's an awesome movie from, I think, the 1980s. It was fantastic. Maybe even before that. I like the concept. I think it's good. I think it's solid. I would give it a three out of five. It's nothing amazing by any means, but I think three is still a good score. Design on this piece, there's not a lot to talk about either. So first of all, I remember the box was huge, obviously, to house the wings. I just I bought this second hand, and I can't remember. Part of it broke off. I think I glued it back on, but it was so long ago. Let's get the dimensions of this. The absolute widest point is over 33 inches. Tallest point you're looking at is just under 23 inches. And the deepest point, depending on what you call the deepest, is probably over 20 inches or so, where the base is more about 11 by 10, right in that range, which always poses the problem with the dragon. Do you wanna have the wings outstretched or not? because it makes it very hard to display, but it looks a lot cooler. Now, I don't know what scale this is. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably like 1 20th. And I'm basing that simply off the size of the castle or the portion of the castle that it broke. This is a very, very large dragon, which I assume is accurate to the game. I don't really know for sure. Now the wings also, and it might be because of, over time, leave a nasty gap here, the seam line in the back. It might be because they're so big, it really weighs down on it. I'm not sure, but that's about it on the design. So. Honestly, I think the design's also a three out of five on this piece. Now we're gonna dive into paint and sculpt, and what's going on here is there's not a lot of differentiation. Let me show you what I mean, check it out. So one nice thing about my phone that when I record this, it really brings out the colors, uh, and you really need a lot of light on this piece because there are so many dark colors. Let's start at the castle down here. 
Um, I don't like how monotone the colors are. You see near the top where it could be some semblance of some more scorching, where it varies a little bit in color, a little bit darker, but I think that's a little bit of a miss. Now what's interesting is most of this to me is more of a basic sculpt. The stones look okay. And again, where the stones look the same down here, I think they missed a lot of opportunity to use some uh, different colors. Like how it's cracking, I think that's a cool effect. You know, right here on the top where the roof is broken, uh, you see not only a lot more colors, but you also see a lot of micro detail, but that's really the only place on the castle you see it. So the castle's kind of eh. Now, as you move up, you do see on camera here a decent contrast, and that's depending on how much light you have on it. If you don't have a lot of light, they look very similar in color, believe it or not. But on the dragon itself, you have the outside scales that are kind of this black tarnished color with some red and orange highlights. I like how you see the orange kind of, you assume he's about to breathe fire underneath him right here, and then it moves up through his neck and out to his mouth. The color on the mouth, I'm not really a fan of. It's too orange pump, uh, pumpkin for me. But I like how some of his uh, uh, tips have more of this armored effect on it. You see that uh, orange color throughout underneath the scales. I think that's kind of a neat effect. If you move up, it kind of goes away, which is traditionally the, the viewing height for this, where if you move down, then you see it a little bit more. So that's an interesting thing to note. His portrait, not really a fan of it. Uh, like I said, I don't know the history of this guy, but it's more of a like a mechanical jaw that I'm not a fan of. It, kind of this armored, not really scales, but actual armor all over him. Then his horns are uneven because they're broken off. The wings are phenomenal though. I'm a big fan of these wings. Um, you know, the flesh in between these bones. I like the color on them. I like the sculpt on them, how they're outstretched. Really phenomenal part of the statue. So they did a really good choice on making sure that these are are uh, extended. Then you see a few rips in here like you traditionally do with some dragons that have been through a lot of battle. Now on the back here, you really see that armor plating. And again, this is something that I think makes him different, which is kind of cool. But really, I gotta tell you guys, in the camera here, it's actually appearing a, light, a lot more colorful than it does in real life. In real life, uh, especially under normal lighting, I think it's a little bit of a miss on the colors. And that's what my uh, grades for this will be based off of. But it's cool for what it is, for sure. All right, so paint, like I said, I hate how it's all this monotone gray, black, and essentially dark colors. While it may be accurate to the piece, it's just not for me. I do like some of the stuff they did, but the paint for me is a three out of five. The sculpt, I like the dragon, as I talked about, better than the castle. And keep in mind, this is an older piece. They didn't make the advancements they have in digital sculpting. For all I know, this may have been traditionally sculpted, which if it is, I'm actually impressed with some of the broken pieces on the castle. But I think the sculpt is a solid three out of five as well. I think there could be an easy argument made that it may be a four out of five. Now, we're not going to talk about value specifically because it's in the aftermarket now since it's been out for so long, but it retailed for only $600 and they made 2,500 of them. So decent addition size and a decent price point, at least for such a large piece. Now, five or six years ago, $600 was a lot for a statue from Sideshow Collectibles if it wasn't half scale or something. And I think for the most part, this retails, and I think for the most part, while I haven't looked for it lately, I think I paid around retail for it, maybe a little bit higher. So does this have the X factor? It's not a five out of five statue by any means. I think the wings and especially how much I like them and how outspread they are really help. I think that bumps it up quite a bit. I think it is a cool looking dragon. Like we talked about the armor aspect. It's not your normal traditional dragon. But in the end for me, this is still a three out of five piece. It means I really like it but it's not amazing by any means, especially when you compare it to some of my other dragon pieces that I really, really like. And I think he pairs really well with this ice dragon that I've actually reviewed right here. You can check it out. There's also a picture of that in the thumbnail. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. So throw down in the comments, does this piece still hold up even though it's that old? That'll enter you into the contest. If you like stuff like this, hit that picture of me. Also, make sure you drop me a like on your way out. I'll talk to you guys very soon.
Take care.